Hey, Scott from Aristocob.com here. And Seth from SethMarkwood.com. Someone should do something with that website. It's a good idea. Together, the three of us, we should do something about that website. But we are Markwood Men's Breakfast Club. Welcome back once again. Good morning, boy. Good morning, Homer. Welcome once again. I love that shirt. Thank you. Thank you. Me too. <laughs> I, I love the fact that it fits me. Supporting our, our buddy Jay. So we're continuing on in our... Uh, <laughs> Smoking through not one Q, but Lane. An outrageous number tobacco. of Lane products. So reach into the, uh, the. I think we're a quarter of the way in. You think so? This, this project. Well, I think we've only done four of these. So pick one. Let's do this one. This is natural. Natural? That sounds like uh, who's on first. You won't care for that. Nope. No, nope, but. What, we'll, it, what we'll is smoke that? It. What's in that? I don't know. It's not cased. We could Google it. But I mean, uh, natural we'll, sounds we'll right. It's definitely it. smoky. So it's got something that's it, it looks Well, no. I don't smell smoky. Oh, man. It, it, smoky. it looks like light and dark Virginias. Could be. Tell you what, I will Google it. Okay. So then we'll know. S smells Rather than guessing about it here. Smoky to me, but as we all know, I'm no expert. <laughs> I only do this on YouTube. Yeah. So, how's it been, boy? Really smoky. Uh, great. Um, really, really good. Very busy. But when is that ever not the case? Um, we have had, uh, we have had some people in and out of the hospital recently. <laughs> um, Are they out of the hospital? In. Yeah. Well, uh, over the last, over the last couple of weeks, um, between us, just in immediate or, like, relatively immediate local family my sister's been in the hospital aunt mother-in-law grandfather-in-law anybody else no dog dog went to the vet um so there's just been just a, a rotating door of hospital visits so yep it has been crazy so i'm looking for natural i don't see natural Are you sure that's what that says that's what it says it says Nocturnal. No, wait. No, natural. It says natural. Uh, that may not be the brand name. It may just be tobacco. It may just be Lane Tobacco. Hmm. All right. I am debating what I want to smoke this in. I, I you said, don't want to smoke it in what you were going to smoke? I gotta because say, it's going to ghost the heck out you of You know what? I'm going to smoke it in this one. Do it. So this is interesting because at the same pipe show where we got this tobacco out of one of the little $3 junk bins, I bought this pipe. And I may have shown this to you before, because uh, it's weird, but you'll notice that the bottom of it is actually the chamber, and you smoke it this way. It's got a little leather sleeve on it, and it's got a, a, a cap on the bottom that allows you to get rid of all the moisture. I'm curious if it had some kind of a filter in here, maybe at some point, mm. or maybe you take uh, a pipe cleaner and run that around inside Coil it around inside to let that be uh, a wick. But I'm going to smoke it just like this. It's a hundred percent metal, so I'm certain I'm going to hate it. <laughs> so, so okay, it's it's hard to see. I don't know if you um, hole in the bottom. We there's a here, hole. Pop, pop the bottom. There's, a, you'll there's see the a hole in the bottom. There you go. There's a hole in the bottom, and so it is. It's the smoke is exiting out from there goes into this like double wall insulated chamber before entering into the stem. So yeah. it, it should theoretically, oh, I need to uh, just got oh, your leather. My leather. Got your leather. Uh, it should Dude, theoretically be cooler because it's got a much longer. Cooler path. in that it's going to give off all of its heat off of it. It, it is going, the, 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 the pipe shall act as a heat sink. I, so your hand will be hot. Have you ever seen Actually, this? Actually, maybe not. Have you ever seen Insulated. this pipe before? I've never seen this pipe before. I think we're about to see why Yeah, we've never seen this pipe before. The very first thing that jumps out to me is, why is the hole in the bottom, and won't that cause problems? Isn't that going to get gunked up? You're going to have to leave the, the bottom of the thing open just for the ash and stuff to just drain out. You're going to have to poke air access in the bottom of that. Why do you, why do you say that? You've lost me. 
Why open up, I... open up the bottom. Look at where it's drawing air from. It's drawing air from the direct. Well, it's gonna. Bottom. It's drawing through the no, stem. It's not all the way around the side. The very. No, it's got little notches. Bottom. It's got little notches. So when this thing is touching. Right, but it's in the bottom of the pipe. Middle bottom, yes. It's, it's in the middle center bottom of the pipe. Yeah, it's like an Aristocab pipe, which that was one of the one, problems of one the would, It was. Oh, so it's problematic, you say. And one would not know about the Aristocab pipe because one has never smoked an Aristocab pipe. Neither has two. Just seems like. Seals really leaky. See, I don't, I don't think probably, we're going to seal here. Probably, yeah. You need like a gasket or something. Mm -hmm. It might have had a gasket at some point. Mm. I'm, I'm curious if this is a production pipe or if this was a one-off. I will say this about natural. It is, um, it's, it's hitting me very much like the cigar I smoked yesterday. Um, that it's just straight. Straight leaf tobacco. That would make sense. Mm-hmm. Mm. So that I can tell you this, the, the stem on this has oxidized. <laughs> All right, so... Mm, this is going to be so pleasant. Yeah, while you enjoyed that, let me talk about... Let me, uh, let me talk about something I found recently in the clearance rack at Walmart. It's like smoking a shoe. But is that the tobacco or the pipe? You know what you'll have to do. You know what, you know what you will have to. You know what you will have to do to get a give it a fair assessment. Smoke some one Q. else. Smoke some. <laughs> smoke, actually, smoke that's one true. Q in that pipe. That's true. That should be the standard test of pipe tobacco. Uh, remove the variables. All right. So um, as I, I've mentioned before, I have started going to the gym. Uh, have not done a great job recently. Um, I had a friend bail on me. I was going to go before work tomorrow, make a bad choice, go before work, and my friend bailed on me um, just uh, just this evening, and so that's not going to happen. But um, and I know I could still go. That's not going to happen. Come on, people, it's not going to happen. Um, and so I went to the gym uh, recently and bought a. What are you doing? Why are you I'm, pouring just, this in my drink? I'm sorry. It's right. just, just straight up nasty. Great. I got uh, some. I have some pipe sweetener. This is old. This is really yeah. old. I'm gonna put a little bit of this on the bit. Keep talking. Okay. You should put some uh, miracle mud in there. It couldn't hurt it. No. Anyway, um, I go to the gym, and um, I didn't have time to change before work. I didn't really or after work. Um, I didn't really want to run out to my car and do this whole thing. So I thought, oh, I'll just buy a uh, padlock from the gym. Well, first of the first mistake is that <laughs> that's really stupidly expensive. I think it was $8 for a padlock. Second mistake. For the gas can I bought at the convenience store. Oh, the yeah. Day. <laughs> that's right. $15 gas can. One gallon gas can. Empty. Yeah, you felt real good about that. Uh, he was I'm gonna not try happy. Brendan's choice instead. Of he, he was not happy. He was not happy with the the gas can, uh, no, in in price nor function. No, because <laughs> no. they have like safety ties the crap out of it to the point that it is absolutely impractical. So I go to the gym. I buy this lock. It is like you know we've talked about buying uh, cheap Chinese knockoffs of things and how that can sometimes be good. This is an example of a time that it is not good. It was terrible. I could not get the lock to open to even put on my locker. I tried and tried and tried. I took it to the kid in the counter. Um, he tried and tried and tried. And then on like the sixth attempt, got it to work. And he's like, oh, it's working. Here you go. I said, that's not how it works. I said, do it again. Another six tries later, it opens up again. I'm like, I don't know what you have done, but okay. And so you, you, with this lock, it is so meticulous. You've got to be exactly on point and you've got to do it. I mean, I have never dealt with a lock that is this finicky. And so I was at Walmart and they had in their clearance section a digital lock. And I thought, oh, that looks interesting. And so here it is. It's just the click. Um, now, what was intriguing about it is that it has Bluetooth. And so theoretically, you should be able to just um, use your phone to unlock the lock. 
And it's got a QR code on the side. It does. So the QR code allows you to, to connect to it and download it. Um, basically download the app and connect to the lock. Um, the QR code is not for opening it. It also has a manual override. Now this is battery operated. It's got an internal battery. So it has a micro USB port. I'm like, thought, cool, cool. That's neat. I didn't know what the cost was. I, I got all the way up to the checkout counter. It was $7. I'm like, well, it cannot be more garbagey than the $8 lock I bought two days ago. So sure, I'm down. Why not double down? I've spent $7 on worse. Um, uh, and so I bought this lock. That is, by the way, the the uh, trademark the tra trade trademark that's, phrase of Barbara Men's Breakfast. That's Club. on our that's on our coat of arms. It's like I've spent blank on worse. That's right, that's right. So I love the concept. I love the concept of being able to just open my phone, which is one of the three things I have with me when I'm working out. I've got my phone, earphones, and a water bottle. Um, and so I love the idea of being able to open it up as I'm approaching the locker. Click click the app and have this just pop open. It doesn't work quite like that. It works close to that, but one of the weird design decisions they made, and I, I can only assume it's to conserve battery life, is before this will listen for Bluetooth, you have to power it on. And so there's a button here that allows you to turn it on. At that point, it will connect to your phone and then you can unlock it. So you it. might as well be push, pushing on the buttons then. So the process is faster-ish than a traditional lock, but barely. Uh, I mean, it works seamlessly the times I've used it. You know, you press the button. If you have the app open, which you can have open as you're walking into the locker room, you walk up to it, you press the button, you click the thing on your app, and it goes pop. Pretty neat. Uh, but still, why couldn't you just have it on all the time? Or, or even better, use location settings so that as I'm approaching, it unlocks. So when you turn it on, it does have a manual override. So I will show you, uh, and, and this goes into part two of the stupid lock, um, stupid but fun lock. So uh, it has a manual four button combination. You can, hello, you can punch in four, a four button code sequence and it will unlock. And so I guess that's nice if you don't have your phone with you. Um, you still have to turn the power on for that. So you're pressing five buttons. <laughs> And then as I show this to Homer, he of course pointed out that uh, uh, the lockpicking lawyer or um, one of the lockpicking, one of the lockpicking guys did something on this and showed that it's really easy to bypass. It is very easy to bypass in part because there's no locking mechanism on this side. It's just flat and just sits right in there. Um, and it doesn't it actually doesn't depress all that far. That's okay. I don't care because I'm, I'm at a very public, very busy gym. I'm not expecting, really, I'm not expecting people to steal much from me and I'm not going to have much of value in the locker anyway. Um, and so uh, I'm, I'm okay with that. But uh, if you see them, they are still on clearance at Walmart because they did not sell very well and the reviews are not great. So don't buy this and also don't buy the $8 version from your gym. Speaking PSA of, for the day. Speaking of bad reviews, this pipe sucks. <laughs> This pipe absolutely sucks. I mean, this is such an unpleasant experience. I'm quitting. I mean, even with one Q, it, it cannot be redeemed. Really? It, somebody asked me, They uh, recently they sent me a message saying, hey, what do you think of those Chinese pipes that have a, a metal insert in the, the, uh, the uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? I can't even think of the name. Bowl? Yeah, okay, we'll say bowl. <laughs> the chamber. And... Uh, I said, I've never, ever smoked any pipe that had a metal bowl mm. that, that that metal didn't impart flavor, mm -hmm. unpleasant flavor. Case in point. Didn't we do... Oh. This is just not good. Didn't I buy a metal pipe at one point and smoke it and wasn't it terrible? Yes, we bought that. Oh, it, yeah, it's a crack pipe. It looked like a crack pipe. Uh, let's be clear. It was a crack pipe. <laughs> we just used it incorrectly. It looked so much like a crack pipe. It was a crack pipe. I'm gonna try the natural. This is again. uh, this was an early an early purchase from AliExpress or one of those online online places. It's not a crack pipe. That's an opium pipe. Yeah, it's it's not good for smoking tobacco. Is what it is. Um, uh, I would not recommend it. Uh, although well, he'll link to the video underneath of where we actually attempt to smoke this. 
I think we had more success with this, uh, albeit unpleasant, than we had with the uh, rolled cigarettes. <laughs> when, we, when we tried to roll our own... Rolling our own cigarettes. Roll our own, uh, yeah, tobacco. We were not very good at that at all. So I don't, I don't like this tobacco either. That's part of it. Well, I, I knew that would be the case. Yeah. We all knew that before we even started this thing. So, hey, I, I said something mm. here a second ago that's kind of funny. To me, funny. Mm. So we mentioned uh, a, a, a episode or two about the YouTube channel I've, I've started with my coworker, Anissa. And it was funny because we were, uh, we're looking and sharing with each other uh, the music that we grew up with, the music that we like. And she was playing for me something by Dr. Dre and uh, Snoop Dogg. And you know, we paused the video and she's asking me, so what do you see here? You know, what can you observe? And one of the things I pointed out was that you know, they, had, they had a pot leaf on their hat. And she kind of laughed and she said, or what you know, people in my generation would call marijuana. And what was so funny to me is, you know why we call it pot? Because the old people when I was a kid called it marijuana. marijuana. <laughs> now calling it pot is old. Mm. And uh, it's funny because when I was in junior high, high school, if you were getting ready for gym class and you, you know, flipped off your jeans and were putting on your shorts, if you were wearing boxer shorts, they would have laughed you out of the, the, the whatever you call the changing room. What do you call that? Locker room. The locker room. Thank you. Um, I don't spend a lot of time in a game anymore. Yeah. <laughs> What's it because who wore, who wore those? Old men wore boxer shorts, right? Right. It was all about the jockey shorts. Now, what are jockey shorts? They're tidy whities And what are the kids wearing? Well, I said the kids. The kids probably wear nothing. What's, what's the latest right. thing? Yeah, it's it's right. boxer shorts because you're wearing your pants down around your, your calves. The kids don't call them boxer shorts, though. They call them boxers. They don't call them boxer shorts. The old men talking about the you kids. You kids in your boxer shorts. Call them in, boxer your, shorts. in your pot. Drinking that pot. Mm -hmm. It's so funny how it didn't take but a generation, mm -hmm. and then something that was once cooler than mm -hmm. what the old folks did is now uncool. It's sort of like what happened to Facebook. I was going to say, do you think all the social media, as soon as everybody mm -hmm. discovers it, is no longer cool anymore? Do you think Facebook will be around long enough for it to become cool again, the younger generations? Because I can tell you, uh, six years ago when I was working in high school, none of the kids. High school kids had Facebook. They all had Instagram or... Oh, they'd already moved or on from Twitter Facebook, you're saying? They did not have them. They never had it? No. Okay. Because, well, I, I take that back. I guess they moved on because they had them when they were 13. When you and by were the time in high they were school, 15, they were not cool. When you were in high school, Facebook had yet to be released mm -hmm. to everybody. You had to be I couldn't in get a in. school group, mm -hmm. a college group to yeah, be invited. I, I couldn't join... I couldn't join Facebook when it was the the first times I heard about it. I couldn't join it because you had to have a university um, email address, and it was only specific universities. I was a, a student at a community college, but it was not on the list yet. Um, it was cool then. So okay, will Facebook be cool again? It'll be cool after everyone else is gone. Once somebody locks the door and turns the lights out. Someone young is going to rediscover it. It'll be like an abandoned amusement park. Mm -hmm. and, and, and kids will come back to it and, and think it's really cool. Facebook is doing know. their best right now to kill Instagram. The, I, it's really ticking me off the Facebooking of Instagram. And now the Instagramming of Facebook where they have mm -hmm. stories and all those things that they, they had over on Instagram. Eventually, it's all going to become one thing. They'll merge it. They'll force every, everyone to use it. It'll be like, mm -hmm. it'll be like Google Plus. Yeah, I, it's interesting you mentioned that. I was listening to a podcast today, Tim Ferriss podcast, um, with one of the founders of Instagram, and some of the things that he talked about founding it, and and some of his recommendation to entrepreneurs was um, profoundly anti that sentiment anti making it everything and he talked about you know just the wonder of of making something that no one was asking for um but listening moving forward once people started asking for it 
So he said a lot of a lot of um, he said a lot of products and a lot of companies are launched without solving a customer problem. And he said when you do that, you don't really have a company, you don't really have a product. You you have mm -hmm. an idea, but if there's not a problem, no one is asking for it, and, and nobody needs it. And so he said, um, you know, you, and you, you need to solve a problem. But in those early days, uh, like he talked about filters. He, he, he said he was on a walk with his wife and um, his his wife was talking about photography and saying, you know, well, I, I, I would I won't ever use that. I wouldn't use that. Well, why not? Um, because my pictures don't look very good because you spend all this time on the on filters that make it look really, really nice. And he said, hmm, OK, and went and made the very first filter that evening. Uh, Did he and, give like bunny ears or something? No, no, it wasn't that. It was, you know, color filters. But he said that um, those very first filters would take three, six, ten seconds to load. So people didn't care because it was giving them a solution to a problem they had. Mm. And so... Uh, and this, now, this could, could ten seconds. I don't have time oh, for that. To right. wait for a filter. Right. To wait to see how something's going to look with a filter applied. Right, but if it's something that is solving a problem that you have, you'll wait for that. You know, you wait more than 10 seconds no, for I just, a hot cup I just of coffee. Think it's, I think it's outrageous that 10 seconds is a long yeah. period of time. It wasn't initially, mm -hmm. but now it is. Mm -hmm. You know, uploading videos to YouTube, depending upon your connection, can take forever mm -hmm. or it can be very quick. And uh, I'm, I'm real cautious to not upload videos until I'm at a place where I've got real strong service. I'm on Wi-Fi or I'm doing it, you know, um, that's Wi-Fi now. What am I saying? I don't. I don't ever hardwire myself into any network anymore. Right. It's all Wi-Fi. Yeah, and and then making sure I always have to make sure to do the um, to do the upload math to make sure that I have enough time in the right. spot where I am to upload. Yeah. Between that, I mean, the two things that take the longest amount of time that I do period on my computer is uploading to YouTube. And, and actually the longest thing is rendering these videos, um, outputting it from the editing software to the final product. What, are you, takes... what are you doing in the edit? Because we try to Almost shoot these, nothing. I think always one time, one Almost straight through. Nothing. So you're adding a title screen, changing the number. I do, I do just a couple of things. Um, since we've switched to using my iPhone, I crop the video because the camera is actually taking in a lot more space than, than what we show. Um, the cornament tree sometimes. That's, it's sometimes it, it, get, it gets cut off because of how we sit, because I don't like his knees touching my knees. So he's and constantly so I, moving. <laughs> always drifting. And I'm, I am appreciative of the wider lens of the iPhone because it has given me much needed knee space. Um, stop it. Uh, so I crop the video, um, cut off the bookends because we record straight through start to finish. Um, very, very rarely is there, there editing that takes place within those those time frames. Um, add the intro and outro, which is standardized for every video. Change the, the title number, and then um, I normally increase the audio. Um, even on the, the phone, um, I make it so that the highest peak is standardized at zero decibels, which is the most that it should be. Speaking of audio, I'm yeah. sorry about the, the dog barking. Somebody reached out to me, and this is a somebody who has a, a podcast that I listen to, and I, I don't know if he's okay. I'm sure he's okay with me promoting the podcast, but let me not do that because of what I'm about to say. And he said, hey, had you guys ever considered making Mark Woodman's Breakfast Club a podcast? Meaning, miking ourselves differently, making sure the audio is good enough to then upload as a podcast. Um, because, you know, you, you can listen to YouTube without watching it. It's sort of a podcast, but it's not so easy to, if you don't have the premium, to download the audio and right. where with a podcast you could. And maybe, I don't know, I mean, it's more work. What Would, would you listen to this as a podcast? And, I, and maybe I should be asking people who aren't watching it. Yeah. Because, uh, I mean, he's th yeah. this guy has offered to help us to give us some guidance on you know where you store it and how you promote it and all that jazz um and by that by, by promoting i mean you know you're, you're gonna connect it to itunes and you're gonna connect it to soundcloud and all these other places where right. people you know aggregate their 
their audio and then download it to their phones right or access it from their phones or mobile devices I remember five years ago we looked into what it would take to do that and it was, it was crazy. a nightmare yeah and it has come a long way I've got a buddy who who has a podcast that he does absolutely and completely through one app one program now he does all of the recording elsewhere and then he uploads it to the app and the app does all of the distribution crazy. all of the other stuff I mean it's it's to the point where you can do a whole podcast from your phone. If Remember you want that to. app because you could record it on the app too, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so and the, edit it and the whole bit. You can do everything. Yeah, the 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 challenge for him with that is the same challenge for us at the moment, and that's the audio quality. Is if you're using the app, um, and if you're not using a microphone connected to your phone, then the audio audio quality is the auto audio quality. Um, seen right here and, and uh, the other thing the other thing that if we decided to start uploading this or anything else as a podcast we would need to be aware of the audio listener because i've listened to podcasts where they are not or where it is strictly just a strip out from the video and if i'm showing you <laughs> this, this and out, talking yeah. about how great this is and not doing a good job of describing it, the podcast listener is totally lost. Right. Well, and then your video viewers are like, why is he describing that that way? <laughs> yeah. I, so, so. The, but you the, know what? Yeah. We, we have, we have visually impaired viewers of this show, right? Who will pull it up on YouTube and, mm -hmm. and watch it, air quotes, by the way, for those of you I'm talking about, um, who would appreciate better, better audio. So what would we do? Would we put a boom mic on this? Would we put lapel mics on? You know, what's going to pick up less barking dogs and motorcycles? And yeah, it could be could brain. be either or. I mean, it it would we would need to to figure that out because we could do it so that the audio we use for our videos is the same audio that we use for the podcast. They could be different audio sources and just use this audio and video for video editing purposes and then have the audio be separate because as we're talking about having separate sources then we're talking about the additional editing, editing yeah. and um you know uh full disclosure it is late on a tuesday evening uh as we film this um and i have not edited nor uploaded tomorrow morning wednesday's video which is not this video it's not the one we're recording <laughs> but i haven't edited or touched or uploaded the one that will be going live at 7 30 which means i will go home edit it render it upload it and then sometime around 12 30 send him a message that says hey it's ready for annotation he'll get around to that about nine and so it'll be about our 7 30 video <laughs> will go live around 9 30 uh tends to be the routine that we have found ourselves in. It happens. So, <laughs> so okay, uh, since we're disclosing fully, <laughs> at this very moment, I am in Germany. That is true. I'm in Germany. So I'm in Germany for about twenty days. Not pretty, at this pretty, moment, but at this moment, at the, it's a pretty a pretty long trip yeah, this time. It could be fun. Yeah. Is it going to be fun? I, you know what? Yes, I'm going to what is the largest trade show in the woodworking industry. And, and to me, that's a blast. Yeah. And to see what's new, what's coming, um, what the trends are, is very exciting for me. Because I, in turn, as a corporate trainer, can start preparing our people. Mm -hmm. Because what's new in Germany and Europe will come its way here slowly. It'll, it'll hit New York City. It'll hit San Francisco and Los Angeles and, and your bigger bigger cities, your more contemporary and more European cities, yeah. Miami. Um, and then over time, it'll start to trickle its way through. So it's, it's in that respect, it's interesting to see a trend that when I see stuff next week, I'll go, that is the dumbest thing I have ever seen. Why would anybody want to do it that way? And then two years from now, when I see it in use in America, it, by then it will have grown on me. Yeah. First example of that, 20 years ago, I saw very wide, very deep drawers being used to, to store dishes. And it's like, who in the world would put their dishes in a drawer? And then at, the more I thought about it, the more I realized, you know, we are taking our dishes from the countertop or the sink, putting them into a dishwasher, and then when they're clean, 
lifting them up mm. to an upper cabinet. An upper cabinet, which by the way, in your house is pulling away from the wall because we had such heavy dishes in right. that in that cabinet for years. Wait, we fill it with paper plates and cups now. So <laughs> just to be safe. All, all, all the shelf can hold. Yeah, so so having having a drawer right near your dishwasher makes sense. Or it's like, you know, the first time I saw somebody put a washer and dryer on the second floor of their home where their living space mm -hmm. was. And it just seems so weird. Why would you want a washer and dryer upstairs? It's like, well, where do you get undressed? And where do you get dressed? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, so things like that, it's a lot of fun for me to observe those things. And sometimes my initial reaction is based on my prejudices. Yeah. And I will poo-poo something only to later have it grow on me. And so I, I like that about the show. How often does the trout swim upstream? How, how often do the ideas come from America or, or the Americas and migrate um, east uh, or, or west? Because, you know. It's rare. Globe. It's rare because we still build cabinets different in America. Our, our space, we have more space. We have more real estate. Mm -hmm. We have larger rooms. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, like, the, the latest trend here is you, you either have no wall at all or you have a like a knee wall between your kitchen and your living room or kitchen and dining room right so in europe that wall space is critical that's where you have wall cabinets or maybe a tall pantry they have mm -hmm. they have these tall pantries there um that, that aren't so common here and uh, as you start eliminating wall space, then it makes the, the, the remaining cabinets, it's critical that they be accessorized to give you complete access to them. Mm -hmm. You know, in the U.S., it's pretty common to have in a corner, a blind corner where the, you have an opening, but then that cabinet goes back in behind another cabinet. So it's where you hide those appliances oh, the mother-in-law gave you 20 years right. ago, and you never see them again. That's unheard of. In Germany, you don't have that kind of space. Yeah. So you probably have some form of a pretty high-tech Lazy Susan mm. in the corner. And by high-tech, I'm talking very efficient, where instead of the doors coming out into the room and banging into things, um, the doors will fold in or push in and then go around. And then you'll have a tray in there that's larger with less of a cutout than what we're used to having. So if your door, instead of having a pie cut, a whole quarter right. cut out of it if you could have a tighter cut where your doors are going to tuck into that you're able to put more things on those shelves mm. so very efficient use of the space neat. so the the curse of that extra space we have here doesn't lend itself to a lot of innovation mm. we're also in love with wood mm. so we've got lots more wood things wooden drawer boxes and wooden shelves and wooden face frames on cabinets there's no face frame that's the wooden frame around the face of a cabinet none of that happened in, mm. in the rest of the world so um because know, they don't have wood available or they're thinking started, long term it started out, it or? started out after world war ii they didn't have the wood yeah. and the face frame back in those days was the most complicated part of the cabinet. It required some great skill to make the mortise and tenon joints in every corner. Mm. You had to have skilled craftsmen. You had to have good equipment, a lot of it. And you had to have good material. Well, after World War II, you had folks that were injured in the war, killed in the war, learned a new skill in the war and didn't want to go back and work in the shop. Mm. And you had this huge demand. So you had to be able to simplify the project so you could throw these unskilled workers onto the project and still get cabinets. Mm -hmm. So, and you don't have the raw material, the wood, which was used in the warfare. So right. um, you eliminate the face frame. That eliminates that beautiful wood and all that compl complicated joinery. Uh, we didn't have those problems here. Mm -hmm. Not to the same degree that right. they had in Europe. And we didn't have to rebuild our country, right. although we did have a building boom in right. our country. Uh, it's interesting. The other thing too is our our cabinets are deeper. So if you take a just a typical European uh, like a pull out that's going to go into a base cabinet and just screw it into the floor of your American cabinet, you're going to have four to six inches of wasted space behind it. That that accessory, while it may be built in Europe, 
would have to have been designed for the American market and right. only the American market. So it's kind of an interesting yeah. dichotomy that they, that we deal with. So that is interesting. Yeah, the, their, uh, the little bit of Europe I've, I've been able to see, clear it was not built for tall or big people. No. Staircases, doorways. I went to I went to a castle and and climbed up uh, spiral staircases. Those were not designed for people. It's like of going this going size. out the birth canal again. It's it's <laughs> the worst, but it was a lot of fun. All right, uh, the tobacco was fine. It, if you like to smoke, if you want to smoke a cigar, it's fine. No, that uh, wasn't cigar leaf. Yeah, it just it just wasn't pleasant, and even in a corn cob pipe. I didn't care for this at all, but you know, whatever. It's fine. Rain Definitely natural. not the favorite. Nothing. Uh, just it, yeah. They don't even know what's in it, but I That's guess right. didn't like it. Maybe they don't even make it. Who knows? Doesn't exist. Not sure where we got this. Yep. Uh, so that's number five, I think, on our <laughs> sixteen tobaccos. Maybe next week we'll we'll pick something that we like a little bit better. But thank you that for watching. Nice. And answer the question: Would you listen to this as a podcast? Good question. All right. Make it a great week. See ya.